I'm uh, Dr. John Hall. I'm a medical doctor in San Antonio, Texas, author of The New Breed, Satellite Terrorism in America. The book is about my experience with a female target in San Antonio, Texas that was the victim of uh, what we think is a satellite-based tracking uh, and harassment system um, based on directed energy weaponry and electromagnetic weaponry used by the government. My uh, impetus for writing the book was to expose the fact that this technology is being used nationwide and globally um, in an apparent experimental fashion uh, to harass certain people. This started uh, about 2006, uh, was ongoing with the female victim that I wrote about uh, until her name was changed and she was moved out of the city where she was being targeted. The perpetrators of the targeting uh, were a private investigative group owned and operated by a former FBI agent who hired nothing but his relatives to work for him. Uh, we spent a lot of time doing counter surveillance uh, on this group to make sure that we had the correct identities. Um, once um, their identities were turned into the police, uh, they then began to target me with some stalking uh, and break-ins into my home. Um, they did victimize me with some stalking and some home break-ins. Um, as of lately, um, they have uh, fairly left me alone, I think due to the publicity I've gotten from the book uh, and the screenplay that's been written on the book. The group perpetrating the attacks in San Antonio and in, uh, in other Texas cities has been identified by myself and others independently of me and, and is a, a former FBI agent running a private investigative group. I've never directly approached them, but we did spend um, quite a bit of money counter surveilling them, running their plate numbers and making sure that we have uh, legitimate identities. The private investigative group is accessing a government form of tracking technology and electromagnetic weaponry that allows them to remotely track uh, a person uh, apparently via um, electromagnetic impulses picked up from their brain as well as um, basically torture them with electromagnetic weaponry that can cause uh, increase in heart rate, muscle twitches, uh, heartburn, severe headache, blurred vision, uh, and attacks on the central nervous system. This is actually being reported by approximately 300,000 other people nationwide and appears to be uh, experimental in nature. The people doing the targeting, do you think it's basically overseen by one group? are a lot of different groups. The perpetrator groups doing this type of targeting um, do have to be given access to this technology. This isn't technology that uh, anyone can get online and find access to. Uh, at the very top, there are appropriate agencies collecting the data. Uh, however, at the community level in each major city, there are perpetrator groups that are pretty much allowed carte blanche to use this technology however they see fit. Some are attacking certain groups um, based on sexual orientation, gender, or race. Um, some are using it for corporate espionage. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, as the data comes back to appropriate agencies, the mix does appear random. Um, but as I said, there are like a group in Palm Springs uh, that's mostly gay men being targeted. The group in San Antonio mostly uses this for um, harassment, for sexual assault purposes. Um, but even though each city may have a group using it for specific reasons, uh, in the grand scheme of things, if you look globally, it's a random sample. While I've only um, a couple of times actually tried to measure for radiation, I know uh, several targets have actually uh, measured for ionizing radiation or x-ray type of radiation uh, and have found uh, there to be ionizing radiation in their homes. Uh, I never had that experience with uh, myself or the victim I wrote about in my book, um, but I uh, have read and had reports uh, from victims uh, like Jesus Mendoza, who's mentioned in the appendix of my book, who did measure uh, increased radiation levels in his home secondary to targeting. The perpetrator group in the San Antonio area uh, seems to specialize 
um, in tracking and targeting single women for uh, sexual assault. In the uh, case of the girl in San Antonio that um, was written about, she was uh, having either Rohypnol or GHB, both date rape drugs, uh, placed into her bottled water and other food sources in her home. Um, she was being uh, drugged with these date rape drugs and sexually assaulted while on them. These drugs are well known to uh, completely inhibit memory. Uh, she often thought that she was having nightmares of being raped when in reality she was truly being sexually assaulted. This is a common finding among female targets nationwide and globally. Uh, most of the groups that have access to this technology, um, while they may be using it in other means, seem to be using it for sexual assault as well. Um, this type of targeting usually starts with organized stalking, which is stalking by individuals that are unknown to the target, uh, unlike stalking by an ex-spouse or a loved one. Uh, this is well-organized stalking um, that got its debut during FBI COINTELPRO work in the 50s and 60s. Um, it's 24-7, stalking at your home, stalking at the workplace. 24-7, uh, we think the stalking accomplishes two things, both a um, psychological form of warfare to put the victim, uh, the target in a victim mindset, uh, as well as gives them the ability to GPS the victim by location, uh, to obviously get a, a remote read uh, on some form of biometric identity, which we think is probably their EEG or brain waves for further tracking. Other reasons that they stalk uh, individuals that I found uh, in communicating with uh, over 5,000 uh, individuals now, by, either by email or by phone or in person, um, whistleblowers are often stalked. I've met with uh, former NSA and former National Reconnaissance Office um, agents. Uh, that were whistleblowers now being victimized by their respective agencies. Um, some of the groups that have access to this technology are using it for corporate espionage, um, but most often the targeting seems to be random. If you look back at any of the um, mind control type research that was done with MKUltra and MK Search in the past, most of the victims or the people that were used as guinea pigs in the experimentation are, are relative nobodies. Uh, it's the common people that seem to get experimented on. Uh, there are ways to um, lessen it, um, not completely defeat it. Um, one of the ways, the best ways, is to notice the stalking when it first begins. <clears throat> if you can um, prove the stalking to the police, most cities have anti-stalking laws now uh, that you can pursue. Um, once you're left with mostly directed energy attack or what we refer to as electronic harassment, uh, it becomes a little harder because there's no tangible evidence for you to present to law enforcement. There are a number of support groups uh, for people that are undergoing electronic harassment. Um, the International, International Center uh, Against Abuse of Covert Technologies or ISAact.org, Freedom from Covert Surveillance and Harassment, and MindJustice.org are just three of many human rights organizations uh, that have banded together to help combat this problem nationwide and globally. Things that a target probably shouldn't do once they realize they're being targeted uh, is try to convince people of your targeting that are already non-believers. Um, the whole goal of targeting is to eventually um, get you in front of a psychiatrist uh, to draw a schizophrenic or delusional diagnosis. Um, what most of the human rights organizations are recommending now is that if you feel you're being targeted first, try to communicate to them uh, to get pointers and advice on who you can talk to and who you shouldn't. Um, as stated before, um, one of the main goals with this targeting uh, is to get you to call the police over and over with complaints that can't be proven, uh, which will eventually land you in front of a psychiatrist who usually won't listen to uh, or look at any of the research or articles you bring in, uh, but will be looking to uh, give you a psychiatric diagnosis. Uh, once that diagnosis is given, um, typically the police won't respond to any further targeting which may escalate after you're diagnosed. The shootings in Colorado, Connecticut, or the Navy Yard, are any of those possibly related to this? The uh, shootings at uh, Colorado, the Navy Yard, and in Connecticut 
um, it, at least one of those we know was a targeted individual. Aaron Alexis uh, had emailed Freedom from Covert Surveillance and Harassment on three occasions. His emails were very well written, uh, were, were, were very logically thought out, uh, did not uh, read to me like the rantings uh, of a madman. Uh, in his emails he stated that uh, he did uh, have a clearance, he did work for the DOD, he knew what the weapons technology was and felt like he had identified where the um, research uh, and possibly the attacks were coming from, um, which days later after his last email he did have the shooting at the Navy Yard, which uh, I'm assuming he felt was um, where the attacks were coming from. Of course, um, had he told us he was going to do that, we certainly would have backed him away from that plan. None of the human rights organizations dealing with electronic harassment, nor myself, uh, endorse violence in, in any way. We feel like the harassment is being done as a larger form of experimentation. Uh, if you look back at the original mind control studies of MK Ultra and MK Search, um, the victims were almost always nobodies um, that lack the financial or political clout to do anything about the victimization. Um, mind control research has been ongoing in this country by all of the intelligence agencies and the DOD since the 50s. Um, advances in technology, satellite technology and RF technology uh, have allowed uh, the lab to be taken out of the laboratory and into society. The long-term goal um, we feel of this targeting um, is to see what the mass effects are on a large group of population um, with probably uh, an eventual use of this technology on a global population for control. You were interviewed by a magazine in Colombia, and this article also had quotes from President Vladimir Putin from Russia. President P uh, Putin from Russia um, was quoted in an article where he stated that directed energy weapons, psychotronic weaponry, uh, weapons that attack the central nervous system would be the future of warfare. His exact quote was that whichever country controlled the best directed energy weapons would control the globe without bullets or missiles. Um, this quote was largely ignored by the American press. Um, the only press agency that picked up on it was El Spectador uh, out of Colombia. They contacted me uh, to get some quotes and some information for an article they did about it. Uh, to date, I have not seen any major media in the United States address um, Putin's quotes or the article from El Spectador, but he was very clear that they were actively uh, pursuing directed energy weapons that attack the central nervous system. So has there been any response from the U.S. media? Um, there's been limited response from the U.S. media. The Washington Times recently did do an article uh, on the Aaron Alexa shooting mainly because he etched this is my elf weapon into the side of the shotgun uh, that he used in the shooting. Um, and of course, uh, there has been a screenplay written on my book, A New Breed, Satellite Terrorism in America, uh, that we hope to use as a dramatic and educational effort on the big screen. In the last decade since I've been dealing with this type of technology and the victims, uh, there has been an escalation in the number of victims voicing these complaints both here and abroad. Uh, it's not going away. Uh, it does seem to be worsening and the numbers of people complaining of this now cannot be explained away uh, by any type of mental illness. This is experimentation until proven otherwise um, and hopefully more and more major media sources will pick this up. Um, I think we'll see more and more shootings uh, as our government tries to get gun control issues passed, um, uh, certainly the Aaron Alexa shooting, and I suspect the Connecticut shooting and the Colorado shooting uh, all had some elements of control involved with them. I've got a second book uh, called Guinea Pigs, Technologies of Control. Uh, anyone that's read A New Breed knows that that's mostly the story of a female victim in San Antonio. Um, Guinea pigs, the technologies of control, delves a little further into the technology, uh, the history of how we've come to this point, 
uh, has been written w with uh, several classified documents that uh, I was allowed to get my hands on. Um, there's been a lot of resistance to um, getting this book out through redaction and censorship. Uh, however, it is um, uh, complete. Yeah, tell us about the uh, screenplay in, in the movie you're putting together. Because electronic harassment and um, targeting with this technology has become so rampant in the United States, after writing A New Breed, Satellite Terrorism in America, the number of people coming forward uh, with these complaints was mind-boggling. Um, there has been uh, some specials done about this on Discovery, uh, on the History Channel, certainly the history of MK Ultra. Uh, can be found in a number of places in several good books. Um, however, once A New Breed Satellite Terrorism came out, there was such an overwhelming response of people being victimized by this way uh, and people emailing me after hearing me on radio shows that I realized quickly that we need a, another venue to get the word out to people that this technology exists. Uh, a great screenplay was written on, based on a new breed, Satellite Terrorism in America. Um, Mr. Mike Muirhead with Bandera Films uh, is working with the production on a movie based on the screenplay uh, and the book A New Breed. Um, we're currently uh, seeking investors. Um, this is a movie that will be produced as a drama based on a true story, not a documentary. Um, it has a great storyline based on a true story. It has a great script. Uh, we're currently seeking investors uh, that would like to invest in making this movie uh, come to completion, uh, which will be a, a great way to educate the public through an entertainment venue uh, that this technology exists and is being used on innocent Americans.